Robert Rodriguez. Oswego Mayor Billy Barlow. Partner at Broadwell Hospitality Group, Shane Broadwell. And let's give a warm welcome for the 57th Governor of New York State, Kathy Hochul. Good morning, Oswego. Wow. I was in search of fun. I said, where on the entire state of New York can I go? And I said, let's go to Oswego. And I love water parks. I will not participate today, but someday I'm going to slip in here. And you won't recognize me. I'll be incognito, but maybe I'll bring my new granddaughter when she's a little bit older. How about that? So this is a celebration of a community that never gave up through some really tough times and challenges and setbacks. And sometimes just wondering, is this really going to happen? I just want to congratulate the entire community for powering through a pandemic, powering through flooding, powering through all kinds of extreme weather. And as a result of you never giving up, we are here to celebrate the first DRI community to have completed all 10 projects. You did it here. Give yourselves a round of applause. Well, I first of all want to thank some of the people I've now called my friends, people I've gotten to know since I was Lieutenant Governor coming here so many times. And you have been blessed with an extraordinary leader in your mayor. Billy Barlow is a visionary. He is the kind of leader that small towns like this, small cities, when they have someone like this who believes so deeply to their core that there's, this could be even better, and they get it done, I want to commend him for being an exemplary mayor, and I can't imagine this city without him. Billy Barlow. You also have the Assembly Minority Leader representing you and, and William Barkley. We've gotten to know each other. I remember coming here when I was a new Lieutenant Governor. We had a Chamber of Commerce meeting right here, and uh, he talked about the power plant nuclear power plant, how important it was for this economy and the workers and the identity of this community. And I said, we'll do everything we can to keep this here and keep those jobs alive. And you've been a great champion for this region. Let's give a round of applause to Minority <laughs> Assembly Leader William Barclay. I also brought our Secretary of State. He's usually traveling the world as the Secretary of the State. but. Uh, Robert Rodriguez, who has been the champion for our Regional Economic Development Councils and our DRI program. It all falls under the Secretary of State, the DRI program. I want to thank Robert Rodriguez for being here today. Let's As I mentioned, the REDC, Randy Wolken, is our Regional Council Co-Chair for the Central New York Region. I've known him for many, many years as well, and again, a, a true believer in this region. Let's give a round of applause to Randy Wolken. Sarah Broadwell, who I've seen every time I'm here, uh, she has done an incredible job uh, making sure that people like me have a chance to understand the depth of feeling about this community and how the businesses are so unique and they're so special. And this is part of your identity as a community. I want to thank Sarah Broadwell for her leadership of the Chamber of Commerce. Sarah, congratulations. Thank you. And then there's another Broadwell, Shane Broadwell, former county legislator, uh, someone who 10 years ago had a vision to do something pretty audacious. Most communities this size don't have something as sophisticated and cool and edgy as a water park, especially one that's indoors. But Shane also said, we're going to get this done. And there were setbacks, and especially with the pandemic, and trying to figure out how we're going to make this happen. But as a result of community leaders like Shane, we're here today. And I want to congratulate him on seeing the realization of his vision as well. Shane Broadwell. Well, you know I love this part of the state. First governor from upstate in 100 years. 
And I know it's something special, especially when you come from an area that you know is spectacular, but others don't always think of when they think of New York. They think of skyscrapers and Statue of Liberty and Empire State Building. And I spend a lot, I was literally there this morning, but I'm also such a believer in upstate. I want to make sure that everybody understands that this is part of our identity as well. So this is part of our state that I'll never forget. I'm going to continue to celebrate. And I think with products like these, we have one more attraction to bring even more tourists here, not just for the great fishing up here and the great boating and the recreation outdoors, but year round, year round, you can come to this facility and have a great place to come even when the weather is not quite as warm as it is today. And of course, to have a children's museum right down the block. I, mean, I said this when I was here before, for a community of 17,000, you really punch above your weight. These are world-class attractions and never take that for granted. And also just having the charm of a local bookstore. To the Rileys, I know you weren't at the River's End, but I just spent a lot of money in your store. <laughs> because uh, I said, get me there early enough that I can buy some books for my one-year-old granddaughter, Sophia, and I'm going to make sure she does come here because bookstores are the heart of a community, and I've been there so many times. So let me say hello to the Rileys as well, so congratulations to you. I remember cutting the ribbon at Wright's Landing Marina. I remember the before and the after, and I also remember the floods and how devastating that was in this part of our state. And I love the fact that someone labeled the 2017 flood a 100-year flood. So you're thinking, we're going to be good now. We've got, got a lot of years. We're good. Until two years later, we had another 100-year flood in 2019, and that was devastating. So we had to build back, never give up. State brought the resources. I came off and just to say, we're going to get this done. We're going to be OK. We're going to get through this. So. It is amazing to have a river, the locks, the connection to the Erie Canal, and one of the great wonders of the world, one of the greatest freshwater bodies on this planet, Lake Ontario, all part of your community. Don't ever take that for granted. And I'm sure as I'm standing here, someday, and you won't know it's me coming to town, or maybe you will, I'm going to bring my boat from Buffalo come all the way on the Erie Canal, go up the canal to Oswego, and experience how beautiful this is from a boat. I haven't had a lot of time lately, so I hope to do this in my lifetime, and maybe I'll bring Sophia, but I, I have traveled all the way as far as Syracuse, and it is uh, the Erie Canal, and your connection to it is an also an impor important part of your identity. But I think a lot of communities that just didn't have confidence and faith in community leaders, like we're seeing here, might have given up on some of these projects. But you had ideas about what a vibrant future could be, something that you didn't inherit necessarily. This community had a lot of charm. It had a great story, a great past. But as people get older and as communities get older, sometimes a little bit of decline. You slow down. You don't have that same luster you once had. And that's the beauty and the genesis of the DRI program. With an infusion of money all at once, a $10 million commitment for a community to be able to realize their vision, not what Albany sits there and says in the Capitol. This is not our idea. This is your idea. This was what you want to see. And I spent 14 years as a local government official, small town, little village of 10,000, village of Hamburg. The idea that all of a sudden you have $10 million in one shot to make projects happen simultaneously and finish at the same time, that's magical. I would have loved that when I was in local government. But you have taken advantage of this, and you have executed this future. And I want you to know, this is really special. And the resiliency that I've seen here, not just from the weather, but from the setbacks, is a testament to who you are as a people, that your children and grandchildren will know there was a time when Oswego wasn't as edgy and hip and cool and enticing as it is now, but you made it that way. You gave it its personality. You gave it its charm, and you kept it growing. You made it even better. 
So I'm going to be sitting at Rudy's sometime today. If you want to sit down with me, I'm going to get some fries. <laughs> uh, look out the lake and get that sense of calm and that sense of it's a special place. Know that you have a governor who understands what that means. What that means, it's, it's spectacular. And I'm really proud we can show you some of the scenes of what I witnessed and you experienced, the transformation of this. And so from new housing, and some of you may have heard, I want to build housing. Because as we take advantage of the fact that we're going to have Micron, 50,000 jobs, right, Bill? Right, uh, some remember? We talked about the need to build housing. It doesn't have to be all one kind of housing. Just mix it up. Give people different degrees. Some very affordable, some high-end, some mixed use, whatever you want. You're the community in charge. But from new housing that you created here, over 200 units with this, that was bold. I remember the mayor and I driving around town on a golf cart in a snowstorm. That's what you do when you're a resilient community. Nothing deters you. And we talked about how the fact that above little shops, we need life, we need housing. And sometimes you need to change rezonings and change the rules on parking and, and envision an old abandoned building as a place you could have families and live. You are doing here what I want done all over the state seeing abandoned buildings or seeing an empty parking lot and saying, I see life there, I see families, I see children, I see seniors who don't have to leave their community when they want to downsize. That's what I'm talking about. And you've done it here. And I want to showcase this to the rest of the state, say, this is what I'm talking about. So your children will not get priced out of living here if they want to grow up in the same community they did, as is happening in other parts of our state. So it's about housing, it's about safety improvements on local roads, it's connecting the downtown to the waterfront, as I mentioned, the museum, which is amazing. And on top of the 200 housing units to have 12 new commercial spaces, and something I love, we've created over 150 new jobs here through this. Those are people who live here, who have an opportunity to have a good income, or someone from somewhere else, or a student the SUNY campus who love wandering the streets and stopping at the bookstore and experiencing life, but they, they now can move here and start a new life. So our $10 million investment has yielded almost, almost $64 million in private sector investments. Let me repeat that. $10 million translated into $64 million of private investments. I call that a success. That's what we're talking about. A seven to one return on investment. So you are the first, the first one to be completed, first one to say, finally, the construction is done, no more delays, no more dust, no more scaffolding, until the next chapter. But for now, you've done your jobs. You are the tear takers of a community with a lot of charm and character, and you made it even more so. So I thank you for what you've done here, the stewardship, taking advantage of this once in a lifetime opportunity. And now we have an opportunity to do something else. Bring our kids here in the winter time, celebrate the downtown, this great hotel, with 20,000 square feet, 30,000 gallons of water, I have no doubt that this place is just going to be filled with laughter and joy and connections of families who otherwise might be sitting at home on a Saturday afternoon on a cold winter day, all playing on their own personal devices into their own worlds. This will connect families together. The museum connects families together. This downtown connects family together. You're giving the children of this community memories that are part of who they are forever. That's what this is all about. That's what you created here, Shane. And I cannot wait to come back uh, with my family and let them know this is a really special place. And the man who was the champion of this project, all the projects, and his team at City Hall who worked so hard, and Sarah and everybody just pulled together. I want to thank them. 
as the governor of the greatest state in the nation. This is one of our greatest communities. Take it from me, I know. Mayor Billy Barlow, come on up and get a round of applause for our great Mayor Billy Barlow. Don't ask him how to ride a jet ski. He's not real good at it. Thank you, Governor. Well, thank you, Governor. It's uh, so great to have a partner in state government uh, and you and your staff, and I really appreciate all the resources that your team has uh, afforded me uh, personally while in office, but also uh, this great community. Um, I can't imagine, I, sh I probably shouldn't, should know better than to say this, but uh, the governor as lieutenant governor and as governor has been here so many times. I would love to see the stat sheet to see New York City aside, because there's more people there, more uh, municipalities, but upstate, where she visits the most, because Oswego really must be up there. Um, she's been here so many times, and I'll never forget um, one time in particular, uh, was totally unannounced on her free time, back to the bookstore. I, I'm at a, a birthday party out of town, I get a call, and uh, it's uh, Lieutenant Governor Hochul. And I said, hello. And she said, Governor, we're, uh, my husband and I, or uh, Mayor, yeah, uh, my husband and I are passing through, um, <laughs> passing through Oswego. Uh, we're going to hit Rudy's and stop at the bookstore. Are you around to come meet us? And uh, unfortunately, I couldn't make it. Uh, but uh, that says a lot about who Governor Kathy Hochul is and how much upstate means to her, how much uh, other local leaders mean to her, and how much really Oswego and, of course, the bookstore uh, means to her. So uh, in addition to that, it was kind of awkward a couple weeks ago, she brought up my knee, so I'll tell this story. Uh, hurt my knee, I go to Shameless Plug, I'm at Oswego Health, and um, it's during, a couple weeks ago, the uh, torrential rain was happening in the city, and all across upstate, really. Uh, so I get into the room, and there's two or three uh, nurses in there helping me, they're taking my blood pressure, they're unwrapping my brace, and uh, the my cell phone rings, and it says, Governor Hochul. And, uh, when I walked in, they said, hey, Mayor, how's it going? You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, I said, hey, guys, would you mind just stepping out quickly? This is the governor calling. And they said, yeah, okay. And I said, no, I'm serious. This is the governor calling. I need to take this. So they un undid the brace faster than I ever could have, took me off the machine and stepped outside. And she was calling to check on how Oswego was doing because of uh, rainfall. You know, not every governor nationwide uh, does that for their uh, municipalities and their local leaders. So again, just speaks to who she is and how much she truly cares, and I appreciate all your continued support. So let's rewind quickly to January of 2016. Most of the people in this room can attest to the fact that Oswego didn't have a whole lot to be excited about pre-January 2016. We had some seeds of growth occurring, the Oswego Renaissance and some other positive uh, things happening, but not a lot. Uh, I'm sworn in in January 1st, 2016, and uh, later that month we hear of this uh, DRI program that is really geared toward upstate municipalities, giving them an opportunity to get some state investment and try to use that to use that leverage uh, private investment. and bring about some projects that will revitalize uh, your municipality. And as I was reading through the criteria, it almost was like the program was written for Oswego at that particular time. And as a new mayor, just taking office with a brand new team, my mentality was that it wasn't going to hurt to apply for this state grant. To be honest, uh, Oswego needed some sort of comprehe comprehensive vision anyway. So. Uh, I told my team that we're going to apply for this and we're going to apply to win. Of course, Swigo somewhat is uh, pessimistic or skeptical, skeptical by nature back then, not so much anymore. Uh, so, you know, we heard rumblings about, well, it's a long shot, that's a Hail Mary, don't count on it. Yeah, but you know what, even if we miss, we still have this plan that we can build on for the next uh, eight, four, eight years. So we came up with our application, and our application was really based on four things. It was based on building connectivity uh, from the waterfront to our core downtown, trying to come up with uh, a nexus of projects that would connect our marina and Breitbeck Park, world-class facilities, 
to our downtown. So if you look at the first component of our plan, you can see where a lot of the vacant or underutilized sites from the waterfront to downtown have now been filled in by the 12 projects that we've completed. The, the second part of the plan was going to be to address the housing, housing shortage that is present right now all across upstate New York. Being a SUNY community, local landlords catered toward the SUNY students. They're from downstate. They're used to paying a lot more for a lot less. And it left a whole segment of our local population out in the dark. So we had to bring about housing units. And we did. The Latatro building, 20 units. Riverwalk, 32 units of uh, market rate units. And then the other two projects, Harborview and East Lake, 75 units and another 70 at East Lake. There, that's the affordable housing, so that the single mother with two kids uh, working as a nurse can afford uh, a quality of, of good, a good quality apartment and at a reasonable rate. Um, and I'm proud to say that after eight years of hearing who's going to live in all of these apartments, uh, well, they're all full and they have a waiting list because the answer to that question was the people who are already living here to begin with that just needed the place for them. So that plan worked. The third uh, part of our plan was to bring in and pre preserve unique businesses and assets to downtown. We can look back, thanks to the DRI, and look at restaurants like Southern Fair, like the Children's Museum, the Rooftop Lounge, the Riverwalk Bagels, the former YMCA converted into uh, apartments, and uh, the Outdoor Pocket Park, the Water Park. And these are all unique destinations that we're already seeing people travel in, not from Oswego and not even from Oswego County in most cases, uh, but from other surrounding counties. I often uh, tell people that sometimes I'll walk into Bistro 197 or the Rooftop Lounge and I'll know everybody. Other times I'll walk in and I don't know a soul. And they don't know me and I prefer those nights. <laughs> but it's true. And uh, with the Sunset Tiki Tours, you look at who's on the roster. I get the roster and I know who's on a tour every single night and I see their zip code. There's not a lot of 13126s. So that really speaks to the synergy, the chemistry, the growth that's happening here in downtown, all seeded by the DRI. And then finally, as the governor alluded to, leveraging private investment. We wanted to take that 10 million and tell the state, if you give us 10 million, we'll bring you back way more and give you the biggest ROI you've seen. And as the governor said, over $65 million in private investment was leveraged by this $10 million. That is a huge ROI. They say government doesn't run like a business. Any business owner will take that ratio of an ROI. And if you actually... If you actually look outside the 12 projects that we've completed um, and take what I call the spin-off projects or the spillover effect, these are projects like the Oswego Movie Theater, those YMCA apartments I talked about, Lock 7, and some other projects. We're approaching $100 million invested to our, to, in our core downtown area since 2016. <laughs> Couple that with the READY funding, thanks to Governor Hochul and her READY team, uh, 2017, 19, and 20, severe flooding all, all around the lake. The state stepped up with almost $13 million in grant funding to mitigate the floods, but also improve our waterfront. We're going to go check out the new uh, uh, Cahill Pier here in a few minutes after this. And $20 million of investment by the state along our waterfront. You can see that now we have that nexus between the waterfront and downtown, and Oswego truly is the place to be in central New York. I'm extraordinar extraordinarily proud of the fact that we've completed all 12 projects, the first in the state, Within my eight years, thank goodness, not a lot, well, not a lot of time to spare there, BHG, but we got it. And um, uh, not only were they the first, but if you go back to 2016, the 12 projects completed were the original 12 we said we were going to do in 2016, which I'm particularly proud of. Factor in supply chain issues, a two-year pandemic, the flooding, inflation, a whole host of others. It's hard under normal circumstances to keep projects of this size on schedule and within budget. The budget is a little dicey, but certainly on schedule. So I'm very proud of that. I just want to mention a few key players quickly. I could not have put this together without my team at City Hall, the folks who have 
uh, left before the end of the term, but certainly the folks still there, economic development and everybody at City Hall, and then our private partners. This really highlights what government and the private sector can do together when we work together. Tom Snyder, I hope you're here, and Jim Dowd from Pathfinder Bank. Couldn't have done it without Tom's. I'd like to give Tom, in particular, a round of applause. Of course, Buddy, Shane, and George with Broadwell Hospitality Group, Ed Alberts and Ab Abby Weaver at Riverwalk, Adam Avery, Kyle Walton at the rooftop in Latatro, and then others, Tony Paldine, Catherine Watson, Ben Lockwood, uh, everybody who had a hand in, in uh, these projects. And Governor, again, your team at Department of State, Paul Beyer, Jamie Reppert, many others provided invaluable insight. Mr. Secretary, you have a lot to be proud of with your team, and I'm so happy that you could be here because we couldn't have put this together without your team at uh, DO, DOS. And uh, they all provided value insight to make this happen, and I thank you again for providing upstate New York, uh, cities like Oswego, the resources uh, we need. So in 2016, the economic tide was against us. It really was. But now, thanks to the DRI, in 2023, the tide is now with us. And because of the DRI and se several other achievements along the way these last eight years, the future of Oswego is brighter than it has ever been. Eight years in the making. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and congratulations. I'd like to introduce uh, Shane Broadwell, our next speaker. Uh, while he comes up, I would also like to call up his dad and the boss man, Buddy, because I have a special uh, presentation I just want to give to him. Buddy Broadwell, back in the 80s or so, uh, was had many businesses, Harbor Hotel, uh, Broadwells, and then purchased the land down here, Edmar Wilsey's, and of course, the Best Western. He has Bayshore and now the water park. Buddy, what you've done to the East First Corridor is really remarkable. And you've done it with your family, local business. Didn't take a ton of help uh, from, the, from the government, certainly back then. We've had discussions, think maybe the city was working against you in, in some instances. But you still made it happen. Uh, as a family friend, I see how hard you work each and every day. So what I wanted to do, uh, and I think this is the appropriate time to do it, is on behalf of the city of Oswego, uh, present you the Community Appreciation Award, an appreciation of your countless contributions to the Oswego community and the development of the East First Street Corridor and more. So please give it a hand, give a hand to Buddy, and I'll introduce Shane. I know we didn't know that was coming. Welcome, everybody, to Splash Indoor Water Park. Here we are, right? I will say uh, we are here right now because of the, the DRI, the Downtown Revitalization Initiative. Um, you know, our water project was recognized once submitted by all the stakeholders who, who participated in the program, so I was one of them. And also the state planners who took all that data back and, and mashed it all together with all the data that they had and came back and when we saw the water park on the front page and one of those that to be recognized, it truly made this a reality. It, it is a fact that we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the DRI project. So thank you. Um, jobs, I want to introduce, uh, meet our splash team, aloha. Unbelievable, totally new addition to, to our entire Broadwell hospitality platform. Um, I mean, we're talking about management, guest services, lifeguards, park services, you know, currently already 48 full and part-time jobs. But because, yeah. And that's just inside this box, right? So what the addition, you know, with the hours uh, that the water park are open, we have to feed people in this park every day. So GS Steamers Bar and Grill, which we've been open for 28 years, has never been open seven days a week for lunch, ever. And we are now every single day. So that same kitchen, that same staff, is now pumping food, th uh, food through that third floor to the whole upstairs splash bar and grill 
throughout the entire park every day. We're talking about in the existing steamer staff, that's in another 12 jobs already within the existing staff that we had there, right? But the cool part of our conversations when we have these is these aren't short term. I mean, everybody from this community knows we hit it hard and hot in the summertime, but man, does it to drop off really fast when we hit November. So this is a game changer because these are more longer term jobs now. Um, you know, everybody around here feels it from November uh, to March. That's a long period of time, you know. Splash now is that destination with our perfect 83 degrees of weather every single day. We look forward to seeing the impact this winter uh, on our day trippers and overnight packages with people now coming into our community uh, during those off months and, and stay and play with us. Thank you, Governor Hochul, uh, for coming today. You've always been a great friend of the city of Oswego and, and leadership and people in the community well, know that. Secretary Rodriguez, again, he's been here through the construction times, tripping over things, seeing it from the beginning to the end. So it's excellent that you're here today. Assemblyman Barkley, nice to see you again, sir. Uh, um, of course, Mayor Barlow just been an unbelievable partner in the whole process uh, with all the city departments uh, from the beginning to the end. All the city and county leadership here today too. Um, we wanna thank you all for that and all the help and assistance that it's, we've needed from all the city departments, county departments, state departments, and leadership to, kind of, to help us put, put the football over the, over the finish line. Again, I'll bring up one more time, one more person who certainly, you know, my name gets mentioned in the press for the idea, or I've been, you know, the picture guy uh, and all that. But th there's no question, we're not sitting here today, you know, without the efforts of my father. You know, most everybody here. So I call him George, but everybody mostly knows him as Buddy, right? You know, he's been fully embedded in this project, and you have no idea, for over four years now. And it has been a full grind uh, for four years, never letting up. No one works harder. He's, this guy's literally had more blood, sweat, and tears in this project than anybody else. So we all thank you again for that. <laughs> We're happy to have everybody inside this park who hasn't been in here to see Splash Indoor Water Park. Um, at this time, I appreciate uh, your time, but I have the pleasure to welcome Secretary of the State, Robert Rodriguez. Good morning, everyone. I'm Secretary of State, Robert Rodriguez, and it's really so exciting to be here with Governor Hochul at this really tremendous announcement. And I get to publicly thank the governor for her unwavering commitment to the Downtown Revitalization Initiative and her support, going back to her time as Lieutenant Governor, has really made this program one of the cornerstones of our economic development strategy across the state. So I wanted to thank you, Governor, for your commitment to this program. And as she mentioned, um, you know, I've been traveling all over the state just trying to keep up with her <laughs> and, and her commitment to DRI. And really that commitment is seated in what is a transformative investment in communities. And what's exciting about that is what you're seeing here is the result of that transformation. This is my second visit to Oswego. Last time I was here, uh, the lights were not yet on, but Buddy was very clear in his vision and his commitment for what could be here. Uh, and I think what was important is that this was our last project, probably the hardest project to undertake and we heard o over a number of um, um, hours how hard it was to get these slides uh, built during the pandemic and, the, and to get them here. Uh, and the perseverance that was required to make this vision a reality. So when we talk about Oswego and we talk about our first round of downtown revitalization, uh, what we talk about is $10 million. And one of the things that's unique, as you've heard about this process, is that we bring people together through this process. It's about partnership. It's about the state um, not telling communities 
how they should spend their investment. On the contrary, it's about letting the community speak and prioritize their investments. We help them plan and then implement that $10 million investment. One of the things that we recognize through this process is that partners like Mayor Barlow and the vision that he has uh, across investing in housing, arts, culture, public space, transportation, amenities like this one, but most importantly that communities need jobs and businesses. And our $10 million is focused on doing a little bit of all those things. And through that, we're able to make the initial investment and the multiplier that everyone has spoken so much about. But really, most importantly, it's about the people who live here, the communities that we're supporting, the stakeholders that are here, the partnership that happens. That's how we're able to make the downtown revitalization initiative successful. And that's why we're seeing so much transformation here in the port city. So we are so proud of this downtown revitalization investment. We're so proud to have mission accomplished in terms of uh, the first of our 69 other communities that are in some form of trans transformation with respect <clears throat> to our downtown revitalization and our New York forward. But all of it comes down to the fact that we will not leave any community behind in our economic development strategy. So we know that Oswego is the first, but it will not be the last of our communities upstate and across the state that we'll continue to revitalize and invest in. So with that, uh, I wanna welcome you all to stay for the ribbon cutting and invite our participants to come up and to cut the ribbon on this truly amazing project and really cap off what has been a transformation here in Oswego. Uh, and we look forward to many more DRIs to come in the future. Thank you.